Hello again, everybody. This is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to cover a question that we had uh, come up when somebody did a post um, here with us on Facebook about uh, whey protein. And there was some confusion about the differences between whey protein isolates, whey protein concentrates, and whey protein hydrolysates. Um, whey protein, just so all of you know, is the byproduct of uh, cheese manufacturing. It's got a really high uh, biological value. Um, it's got a great amino acid profile in that about 25% of its BCAAs. And in addition to whey being this great source of protein, when it's in the proper uh, form, which we'll cover, it also is antimicrobial in the sense that it kills bad, bad gut bacteria um, in your gut. You know, it doesn't affect your good, your probiotics um, in your gut. It's um, immuno-enhancing. It can increase glutathione levels. It can act as an antioxidant. Um, it's also been demonstrated to be anti-carcinogenic. So whey is really a superfood. Now, some people are allergic to whey, so not, it's not common, but it is a, a, an allergy that some people have, so that's something to consider. Um, now, back to the forms. Now, whey protein isolate versus concentrate. What makes a whey protein isolate an isolate is the fact that it has to be at least 90% protein. Um, there's other things, obviously, to consider. There's fat, lactose, things like that. The process of taking whey from its byproduct of cheese and filtering out the cholesterol, the ash, and the lactose, um, and the fat, is that you, uh, I mean, I must have said fat twice there, but anyways, filtering that stuff out is, is what's going to determine, hey, what type of protein is it? is it? If it's less than 90%, it's going to be a whey protein concentrate. Now, there are various methods to separate out the byproducts of whey, if you will. Um, there is ion exchange, which is a process where we use chemicals and use charges, um, so exploit charges to separate out the fat and lactose and, so, and such. Um, when we do that, we denature some of those native microfractions that make whey great, the things that I had just previously discussed. Those benefits aren't realized at the same rate when we use ion exchange as a process. So there's ion exchange whey protein isolates. Many of you will see that will have no fat, no lactose. The problem is, is that some of those native fractions are destroyed in the process. It's done at a higher temperature, which again can denature these fractions. Um, microfiltering, or also known as cross-flow microfiltration, some of you will see that. That's a patented process owned by Glombia. Uh, but other companies do microfilter proteins. It's the use of ceramic filters. It's typically done at a lower temperature. The pH is a little more controlled. And that's the best way to preserve the microfractions of whey protein. Um, you're going to get at least 90% protein. The fat and lactose, for the most part, is going to be removed from the protein, assuming we're talking about an isolate. Um, and that's going to be the best form of whey protein isolate you can buy. If a uh, label doesn't say, uh, if it just says whey protein isolate on a label, I usually assume that it's an ion exchange because if it were microfiltered or CFM, I would brag about that if I was making a product and say that. Um, it tends to cost a little bit more too. So if it just says whey protein isolate, it's probably ion exchange. Whey protein concentrates can use these very same processes. It's just that they're not taken up to the point where we're getting to a 90% protein. Um, it stops short of that. Some of the fat, lactose, and cholesterol is left over. Um, if you are not concerned with the calories and you're not lactose intolerant, that's fine. Um, ideally, it's you know microfiltered or cross-flow microfiltered whey protein concentrate um, for the reasons mentioned before. Now, this is often not disclosed in the label. Usually, it's just whey protein concentrate, and sometimes you get the percentage of protein, 84 or something like that. Um, that's revealed. If it's not revealed, again, my assumption is, oh, it's ion exchange. Um, otherwise, you know, you'd be saying it. Um, next is whey protein hydrolysate. It's a whey protein isolate, and then what they do is they take it and they chop it up into smaller peptides. Basically, pre-digestion is another word that you'll hear, where usually it's done with enzymes where you break it into these smaller peptides. But when you hydrolyze a protein, there's a few issues. Number one, those microfractions are destroyed, which, again, you lose out on those great benefits of whey. Two, it costs more. And three, there's this notion somehow that, oh, it's, it's going to help uh, absorb faster, um, you know, who cares? It really doesn't matter because the rate of gastric emptying and absorption, it's affected by a lot of variables and the few minutes, what have you, that you may absorb something faster, it really doesn't matter what time compared to say whey isolate. really doesn't matter in terms of your growth, uh, in terms of your performance really. It, it, it just doesn't make that much of a difference when compared to say a CFM whey isolate. So, um, and lastly with that, the degree of hydrolysis is very rarely if ever revealed. You know, it could be only hydrolyzed 5%, but yet you pay a premium for it. So that may not be worth it. And when you hydrolyze it too much, when you take it down too far, um, it ends up too bitter and it's very difficult to flavor. So those are things to consider. Um, other questions we had. I went over the pros and cons. Um, 
I think I think we covered everything in this one, yeah, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, he, Jeff's the one who posted it on Facebook and said, hey, there's a lot of confusion out here about the different types of whey. So real quick to recap, there's whey protein isolate, at least 90% um, protein. And then within whey protein isolate, it's either ion exchange or microfiltered, or sometimes you'll see cross-flow microfiltration, again, which is that patented process. Next is whey protein concentrate. Same applies, the method by which the whey is you know, separated out, where they get the water, um, you know, the fat, lactose, cholesterol out of there. Same holds true for a concentrate. And then hydrolyzing. Take it, chop it up into smaller pieces because, hey, we need it to absorb super fast, otherwise it won't work, which is not true. Um, so keep that stuff in mind. Uh, lastly, I'll say uh, another pro to a whey protein isolate, in my opinion, is I find they taste better. They mix a little bit easier. Um, those are subjective feelings. Again, if you're not lactose intolerant and you find a high quality whey concentrate, you can probably save some money and, and use it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, again, I just stick with the CFM whey isolate personally. Um, yeah, temperature, pH, these are all things that are going to be affected during the processing of whey. So the idea is to take the whey from its native state, you know, right out from being a byproduct of cheese, and get, it, get as much of the junk out of it, as, as, if you will, without damaging the protein itself. That's the whole goal. So if you guys have any other questions or comments on, on the uh, video or on way, uh, go ahead and post them in the comments section. More than happy to answer them. Also check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.